Hey, what's going on, crypto people? It is the Crypto Seed with another day in the life, in the crazy life that is the digital asset space. Good afternoon. Happy Saturday to you. Hope you guys are having an absolutely outstanding day today. The market is uh, interesting, right? 10,000 something, but 10.5, I guess, is where it is. Uh, XRP is below 25 cents. It's by 24. Uh, since uh, 24 and a half cents, somewhere along those lines in goodness gracious. So that's exciting, I guess, right? For for, for people that want to continue to uh, increase the size of their bags, right? So this is, is a great buying opportunity. If you are in a position to buy, it definitely is. Uh, this definitely is a great buying opportunity is what I'm told, right? Uh, so, you know, so let's uh, pay attention to that for sure. But I do think it's important to note that the partnerships have not changed, <laughs> right? They're only increasing. And so I'm gonna share some stuff from Twitter today, uh, a couple of articles. I think one very, very interesting article is um, uh, Ripple's um, investigation to some kind of transactions on the ledger that they're looking, they wanna look into and see what's kind of going on. That is very interesting uh, to note. The Fed admitting, the Fed admitting that perhaps they've been doing things wrong that is a definite uh, follow, a definite look into. So that Jerome Powell apparently has said that. So we'll look into that as well. Shout out to all the people that continue to add value to the community every day, whether it be Michael Bow, Five Links, or, uh, XRP Yo-Yo, Real XRP Boy, um, XRP Crypto Wolf, and the list just goes on and on. Thank you guys so much for taking your time, your energy and resource to add value to our lives every single day. So I'm going to get into some of this stuff here. It's just, um, uh, let's see what I want to cover. Let's start with this one here from Michael at Bow 5 links A definite follow if you want to keep up to date with what's going on <laughs> in the space, right? Uh, the digital asset space as a whole, uh, definitely want to follow Michael. And he is at Bow 5 links on Twitter. So this is what he tweeted. The Fed is tactically admitting that it's, uh, inflationary monetary policy has restrained growth and held down wages. That's very, very important to say. And I'm covering this because, you know, we say on our channel, uh, you know, it's important to level up your XRP IQ, level up your digital asset space IQ as a whole, and level up your financial space IQ. And that means you have to know what is going on, right? So that you and I can be two and three steps ahead uh, of what's going on for sure so that we're not caught uh, with the pants down as they like to say. So this is um, from factsbusiness.com. It's a little video here too that I think I'm gonna play for you guys because I think it's really, again, important to know. Fed unveils a new strategy on achieving inflation and unemployment growth. Let's just cover this. Uh, let you hear this and then I will continue on with the video. It's that guy, the uh, author of Unstoppable Prosperity, looks like. It brings me back to, again, what I was saying, two of my favorite, most brilliant Fed watchers, uh, former Dallas Fed advisor Daniel DiMartino Booth, Nomi Prince. She's the author of Collusion. But let me start with you, Danielle, because something tells me you think what the Fed is doing is a mistake. Well, I, look, they, they, they didn't raise interest rates for seven years in the last cycle, and they haven't been able to hit their 2% target since 2010. So I, I think what they're trying to do is run the printing press for even longer, so they had to find a new way to do that. So they looked all the way back to the, 19, to 19, the mid-1930s to the mid-1940s when they were able to keep interest rates at the zero bound uh, for a decade. And I think that they feel like if they target on employment instead and and say that it can fall as far as it possibly can that, that maybe they can stretch for a whole decade without normalizing interest rates so that the stock market can can stay levitated right well you know no i mean uh, back last year january of last year uh, i think it was the third or the fourth and, and, and jay powell sort of had or shared an epiphany that that wage inflation does not automatically mean price inflation I thought it was the ultimate buy signal. It turns out that it was. Uh, in the meantime, though, they seem to have been fretting about their inability to create inflation. For the Fed, that seems like a serious issue. I mean, should we be talking more about deflation? Because isn't that what really roiled this nation, the world, during the Great Depression? 
Well, yeah, certainly deflation is a problem for economic growth, just, just by definition when we look at the real economy. And I think, um, to your point, what the Fed has done is kind of rubber stamp itself um, and its, its general policies, uh, particularly most recently, of inflating its balance sheet again from what was $3.7 trillion last August to now uh, nearly $7 trillion. Part of that's the pandemic, yes. But, but this new policy, which is really just um, you know, rubber stamping the current policy they have, which is that they can't get at real inflation above 2%. So saying it's now going to be an average around 2% versus actually 2% um, really doesn't make a difference in terms of their right. policy. What they have done right, right now is effectively green right a bigger balance sheet, higher stock market, greater debt, um, and, and potentially greater risk to the markets at the back end. Uh, we've got less than 30 seconds. Just a yes or no, maybe if you guys can do it. Danielle, Nomi, Nomi, start with you. Should the All right, so enough of that. Uh, interesting, interesting uh, stuff right there. And I, what, what I always say is, look, you know, ultimately, we are ultimately responsible for our, you know, financial uh, future uh, without question. So, but this is an interesting article. The Fed concedes that Trump was right all along, that Trump was right all along. The Fed concedes. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell admitted last week at the virtual uh, Jackson Hole Symposium that the Fed has undershot its 2% annual inflation target consistently for the last several years. The Fed is tactically, uh, ta tactically admitting that its deflationary monetary policy has restrained growth and has held down wages. Now the Fed is promising to aim. Which brings me back to, again, what I was saying, too, my favorite. Now the Fed, I'm trying to close this and it won't close. Now the Fed is promising to aim higher in order to get more dollar liquidity into the economy. Powell's 3,000 word address could have been summarized in just one sentence. <laughs> okay, this is Fox business, right? So you guys get it, right? So President Trump was right, we were wrong. Powell has been exalted of late as a sage and some have even suggested that he should be Times Magazine Man of the Year. Is that right? But for the last several years, Trump is, one, is the one who has sounded the alarm that the Fed has been too tight, as evidenced by falling commodity prices and long-term interest rates, signaling that expected inflation rates are at half the Fed's target. So in, in any case, we, we, we understand, we've covered this, uh, you know, the whole inflation and deflation thing is certainly up there, uh, for debate. This is what we do know, that the Fed, right? they're not ultimately not going to be responsible. They're not going to take care of you. They're not going to take care of us. There's, that is up to you and I. That's why one of the reasons why we're in the digital asset space. That's why we have a generational wealth formula, which is digital assets plus sound, sound saving instruments multiplied by cash flow business, right? We have to have something to put in place. We have to have a plan to put in place because these guys they don't know what they're, what they're doing, and they're certainly not going to look out for you and I. I was just uh, listening to Valuetainment um, yesterday, and, and they, he was going over Joe Biden's potential um, tax plan. <laughs> uh, it's just, uh, here's the deal. It's scary, right? And what we have to do is be two, three steps ahead, know the rules, play the games by the rules, and take advantage of the that to better um, support our families when we can, like digital assets, like having sound saving instruments, right? Like earning assets, earning interest on our assets and leveraging our assets versus liquidating them, right? Because they're not gonna look out for you and I. Look to platforms that are looking to support you, right? Look to platforms that are looking to support you, not manipulate or leverage you, right? And, and that goes for content creators, that goes for YouTubers, always pay attention to that. So next thing that I wanted to cover is, this is an interesting thing from James Rule XRP. What's going on, brother? Appreciate you big time. Ripple High expert to investigate unusual activity on the XRP ledger. That is interesting. Let's go over this from the Daily Hot. Oh, thank you, James Rule for saying this, brother. Um, Ripple is looking to hire an expert to investigate and monitor the XRP ledger and probes suspicious activity. 
the person who fills Ripple's new investigations analyst opening. Oh, this is just in general. Okay. All right. We'll join Ripple's Bank Secrecy Act. Ripple's Bank Secrecy Act. Hmm. Uh, BSA compliance team according to a job post. Among other responsibilities, the analyst will be required to identify any existing gaps and make recommendations to enhance the suspicious activity reporting process and other anti-money laundering related controls. Uh, get it? See what's going on here? <laughs> they're, they're strengthening the ledger. If, if you understand, we all know that they do updates and they improve the ledger, right? We can see that and they report when they do it, right? But this is, this is about in increasing and enhancing it, uh, making it more pretty, if you will, to the people looking in at it. And you know who those are, right? The people looking in at this ledger. Could that be the Federal Reserve? It could be. <laughs> With the help of MIT, it could be. With the help of the Federal Reserve of Boston, it could be. So the analyst will also conduct the day-to-day -day monitoring of the XRP ledger, perform transaction analysis, and file relevant reports with regulatory and law enforcement agencies. Do you get what's going on here? Right? <laughs> we always say this, right? You know, when it comes time to make a phone call, you can't reach anyone on the Bitcoin blockchain. You, you just can't reach them. It's, it's so very, very important to understand that, that the central banks, the Federal Reserve, the IMF, the WEF, whoever it might be, they want to be able to make a phone call. They want to be able to have their questions answered. They want to know uh, from law enforcement agencies that you've been checking in on a regular basis, that you've been working with them and not against them. So... Passed in 1970, the BSA established requirements for financial institutions to help the U.S. government prevent money laundering. Okay, Bank Secrecy Act. Okay, I was not familiar with this. Although Ripple will investigate matters connected to the XRP ledger, if requested, the company knows that transactions are irreversible. Ripple does not, own the XR, uh, does not own the XRP ledger, and the users of the XRP ledger are not customers of Ripple, the company. Therefore, Ripple does not have the power to reverse transactions, even in the case of a reported financial loss like theft. By submitting a request to Ripple, the company says consumers are effectively giving the company permission to report the matter to the U.S. lawmakers at the federal, state, or local level. Ripple is also currently advertising for a due diligence specialist to join its Bank Secrecy Act compliance team. You see what's going on here, guys? You know, we said, if we said it once, we said it a thousand times. Whoever it is going to be that's going to sing the praises of Ripple and its technology, whether it be Mnuchin, whether it's Powell, whether it's the current administration, it doesn't matter. When they usher them up to the front of the room, this is another example of what they will be saying to the masses via mainstream media, right? What they need to usher up into the front of the room <coughs> is, is examples, is the epitome of, of transparency, is the epitome of working with regulators, is the epit epitome of, um, uh, what do I wanna say? Uh, the opposite of privacy or the opposite of trying to hide things, right? It's, it's the, opposite, the opposite of trying to uh, uh, assist the anti-money launderers, uh, anti launderers, to assist the, the, uh, the hackers, right? They want something that they can usher into the front of the room that is working with them and not working against them. This is a prime example of that. It's a prime example of that. <laughs> Interesting. Ripple is also currently advertising for a due diligence specialist to join his Bank Secrecy Act compliance team. How many blockchains, how many fintech companies 
have a Bank Secrecy Act compliance team. I don't know. I just know that Ripple does. This is the company that created, these are the people that created the Interledger protocol and gifted it to the W3C, the people essentially in charge of running the internet. Currently, both people from Ripple and people from the W3C are working on the Interledger protocol. Right? Again, when, the, when the, and it's going to happen, when they usher up, when they start to sing the praises of this good old USFA company that is mentioned in the executive order 13772, put together by Mnuchin and a partner, signed by the current administration. They are going to want to have and be able to sing. It's going to be a laundry list of things. Ripple, is, can't you just, can't you hear it? Can't you hear them saying these things about this company, this good old USFA company, and all that it's been doing to be, uh, to help, uh, to be compliant, to help fight against anti-money laundering, to be fully transparent, to, to put a dent in the notion of ultra accounts with their technology, the 10 who, I don't know, I get 10 million, I get 17 million, I don't even know what it is. It's 10 trillion, 17 trillion, 27 trillion. This company and this software is going to be able to free this up and, and increase the, the speed of money. All, all the, not a single transaction in error, not a one, over 50 million uh, uh, closes, if you will, on the, on the ledger without an error. So the San Francisco-based global payment startup has dealt with numerous scams related to XRP. In February, Ripple launched a new portal designed to give investors a way to report malicious activity connected with the XRP ledger. The startup for is known for its high turn is currently advertising for 20 positions in total. Again, to me, this just speaks to how, you know, just, just add, to, to add this to the laundry list of things that Ripple is doing that Ripple is doing, right? And so Congress, right? Members from Congress will see this. The members of Congress will understand this. They'll, they'll learn more about this US of A company that has been doing all the right things, working with the central banks, not against the central banks, working with the different governments in the different countries, not against them, helping them to improve something that they already have in place and helping them to improve it, educating them. And again, it's a good old US of A company. And I think to this administration, I believe to this administration, that is a very, very important fact. I truly do believe that. I truly, truly believe that. All right, guys, so let me go on to the next thing. Toho Labs um, tweeted this out, and I think it's important to understand. Flare Network is one of the most promising projects in this space with a talented team sharing our values. The pace and ingenuity at which they are executing their plans is simply amazing. We're happy to join partners, to join forces and partner with Flare. You see what's going on? You see, you see what's going on? The, the great young minds are working together to do things better with XRP, whether it be on, on a different network, it doesn't matter. People are joining in to do whatever they can to prove more use cases and utility for XRP. It's, it's, it's just, it's a game over. We're talking about a company with a $10 billion valuation. We're talking about a company that has the ILP and the XRPL ledger and Codius and the greatest digital asset ever created. We're talking about the XRP as being the most liquid asset out there in the digital asset space. We're talking about speed. We're talking about efficiency. We're talking about all the things that Madame Lagarde is saying that we need in the ECB, right? All the things that we need. Remember that tweet? These are the things that we need in the ECB. And Brad Garlinghouse retweeted such a thing he retweeted it remember that 
he, that, that's the word on the street, right? He retweeted these things, my poor computer, right? So he retweeted, where is that? Is that the one? No, nope, that's not it, right? Why did, he, why did he do that? I don't know. I don't know if I could find it. Nope, I probably can't find it. But he retweeted uh, this, that very thing from Madame Lagarde. Uh, let's see. And I, I do think it's important to understand that, that 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 did happen, right? It's very, very important to understand. So when it comes to what this company is doing, it's just, look, guys, it's exciting to see what they are doing. Is it this one? Nope, it's not that one either. So Madame Lagarde tweeted about the things that we need. David, David, Brad Garlinghouse retweeted it retweeted it. <laughs> uh, it talks about uh, speed, transparency, efficiency, right? Uh, all those good things. Let's see if I can find it. I thought I had it in my thing. Let's see. Oh, she's got two um, things there, huh? She has two things. Look how, look how slow my computer is, man. I, my poor little laptop. Oh, now we need, here it is. Faster digital transition. Climate protection is a priority. And how many times has that, uh, uh, you know, there's been anti the Bitcoin and the mining stuff and the pro XRP and the ledger stuff been pointed out in graphs, showing the difference in the use of electricity Right, so this is important. Again, another thing that they can sing from the rooftops about Ripple and its technology. Climate protection as a priority, completed banking union and capital markets union backed by cutting edge payment systems. You think she, we all know how, you know, she's been ushering around and hanging out with Brad and ushering him into meetings with central banks. Can't forget that. And she's the head of the ECB right now, right? So. It's hugely important to understand that that is ultimately, um, again, anybody, whether it be Madame Lagarde or that anybody can sing the praises of Ripple and its technology, right? And Ripple keeps giving them more and more and more reasons to do so. So, all right, guys, listen, I'm going to wrap up this video like I do all of my videos and remind you guys of this. Oh, money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather us remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Our you participating or are you standing on the sidelines here's what i do know that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours go get it i'll talk to you soon guys see ya bye